Hello everybody, it's the Tominator, and today I wanted to take a look back at one of the most infamous moments in all of professional bodybuilding. This was arguably the most controversial decision in Mr. Olympia history, and yes, of course, we're talking about 1980, the year that Arnold Schwarzenegger came out of retirement in a shocking comeback and laid claim to his seventh and final Mr. Olympia title. Much to the chagrin of his competition, namely Frank Zane, Boyer Coe, and Roger Walker, who were so distraught by the outcome that they boycotted next year's Olympia contest. Mike Menser, in particular, was so outraged by his quote-unquote ridiculous fifth-place finish that he vowed to never compete again. And he never did. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. In order to better understand why this was considered such an injustice, we first have to examine the surrounding circumstances, because pictures alone don't tell the whole story, especially considering this was back before the advent of digital cameras, and so most of the available photos and video footage looks like it was filmed with a proverbial potato. The sheer lack of quality photographic evidence makes this contest almost impossible to accurately judge today. And that's really the main reason it took me so long to get around to putting out this video, because I've been planning to do it for many months now, but simply could not find enough solid material to go by, so it kept sort of sitting on the back burner. But I finally decided to buckle down and get her done, so I scoured the internet and read through some old bodybuilding art articles and forums, rounded up as many good pictures as I could find, and was fortunate enough to stumble across a very well-written paper documenting the whole affair and a lot of the political shenanigans going on behind the scenes. So that proved to be very enlightening, and I'll link to this article in the description below. But yeah, keep in mind that this was my main reference for this review. Now, before we really get into this, I have to confess I initially did not understand all the fuss and complaints about Arnold winning because honestly, even though he wasn't at his best, he was maybe say 80%, he still looked pretty dang good, and that's the truth. Now, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you probably know that I'm one of Arnold's harshest critics. Unlike most of the other channels out there, I've been very outspoken against him and even made an entire video about why I think he's overrated, so needless to say, I'm far from a starry-eyed fanboy. But nonetheless, objectively speaking, when you look at lower res picks such as this, it's hard to argue against the Oak. I mean, he just dominated the entire lineup in terms of size, he was absolutely outmassing everybody out there, and he had a number of standout features and attributes in his favor. As usual, his arms, especially the biceps, and his pecs were probably the best in the show, and his V-taper, I would argue, was second to none with that sunken stomach and wide lats, his calves as well were among the very biggest and best, and his posing and overall presentation goes without saying. So Arnold still had a lot of things going for him, and at first glance he might indeed appear to be the rightful winner after all. But that said, he was hardly without his flaws. Make no mistake about it, this was not a prime Arnold Schwarzenegger, okay? He was not as big as in the past, and his conditioning was noticeably off. As you can see here in a rare high-quality pick, he was neither as tight nor as hard as runner-up Chris Dickerson or even third-place finisher Frank Zane. His back lacked the finer details that theirs possessed, and his hamstrings had virtually zero definition. Arnold's only saving grace here in the rear relax pose is his excellent set of calves and overall size advantage, but conditioning-wise, he clearly comes up short. His other major weak point was of course his thighs, especially the quadriceps, which were considerably down in size compared to previous years, and were definitely out of proportion to his massive upper body. Here we can see the shorter Mike Menser had him beat downstairs in the ab and thigh. So on the basis of conditioning alone, no, Arnold decidedly did not deserve to win this one. Look at his legs here compared to Boyer Coe's. The lower body's not even close, guys. To be blunt, he didn't even deserve to crack the top six based on his subpar conditioning. But the thing is, as I already mentioned, Arnold had a lot of other stuff going for him. And it's not like anybody else was exactly flawless either. Though Dickerson had great conditioning and looked like he was carved from solid ice, his arms were relatively small, and he was getting overpowered by larger bodybuilders. Frank Zane was similarly ripped, but also a little flat, and about 10 pounds too light. Menser was in great shape and looked sensational in certain poses, but as we can see from this angle, his chest was, was rather shallow and flat, and his stomach was slightly distended. Now, obviously, this midsection wouldn't be considered bad at all by today's standards, but for this era, any amount of bloating or protrusion was inexcusable. Although it must be said in Mike's defense that his chest looks much improved when executing the side chest pose, as he's holding his own here next to the Mighty Oak, which is no small feat considering we're talking about the best old-school side chest in all of bodybuilding. 
In fact, Menser's edge and conditioning becomes rather apparent when we look at the grainier texture of his arms and shoulders and note the added density and detail he displayed. Sixth place Roger Walker there in the center was probably the closest approximation to Arnold in terms of size and thickness and overall development, but then again he was a little blocky and lacked Arnold's signature aesthetics and taper. So again, you can say that Arnold wasn't at his best, his legs were too skinny, his conditioning was subpar, and his abs left a lot to be desired. Certainly there were no match uh, for Dennis Tenorino's picture-perfect six-pack over there on the far right, but in spite of all this, you could still make a strong case for Arnold winning this Olympia based on the pictures. Yet, like I said before, there's more to this contest than meets the eye, so let's take a look beneath the surface to see what exactly was going on behind the scenes to account for such a seemingly overblown controversy. So some interesting facts to keep in mind here are that Arnold wasn't even supposed to compete. He had retired five years ago in 1975, and while it's true that the other competitors were aware he would be in Sydney, Australia, attending the event, he was supposed to be doing color commentary for CBS, not standing alongside them on stage. As it turns out, Arnold only officially registered the very day before the show, so that kind of caught everybody off guard. This perhaps at least partly explains why the rest of the field didn't bring the requisite level of mass to hang with the oak, instead making ripped conditioning the top priority, as they would have been modeling themselves after the current three-time champ, Frank Zane, who we all know was renowned not for his size, but rather for his leaner aesthetic appeal. The other thing to remember is that Arnold only trained for a mere eight weeks to get ready for this show, and while in a way this makes his victory all the more impressive, it also made something of a mockery of the sport by having a former champion from years gone by just waltz into the biggest bodybuilding event in the world and summarily overthrow the other 15 athletes who had all been painstakingly preparing for months. If you think about it, this essentially implies that the sport had more or less stood still for five years, or even regressed. So again, this is a testament to the greatness of Arnold as much as anything, but you can see how it might leave a very sour taste in the mouths of the rest of the top six. Another interesting fact is that Arnold also notably neglected to hit certain compulsory poses. Look at his response, for instance, when the judges called for a tricep pose. I don't know about you, but the praying mantis doesn't exactly qualify as a side tricep in my eyes. Yet the judges let it slide. None of them saw fit to correct him or enforce the proper pose. Then again, Menser's variation isn't much better, so perhaps it was simply a more lenient time back then. Furthermore, we cannot discount the audience reaction, okay? This tells a tale in and of itself, because allegedly about 40% of the 2,000 some odd fans in attendance booed when Arnold was announced as the victor. So if even the fans who were excited to see a returning legend and who had cheered for Arnold throughout his posing routine booed the decision, surely something was amiss. Boyer Co. noted that when Mike Menser's name was called for fifth, he immediately sensed foul play at hand and knew that Arnold had won. According to Boyer, a fair placing for Arnold would have been eighth or ninth. Even Ben Weeder, at a later bodybuilding seminar in New Zealand, introduced Chris Dickerson as the man who should have won the Olympia. CBS's decision to not air the show is another damning piece of evidence. The producer covering the event, Sherman Egan, made it clear to several of the competitors that even with his limited knowledge of bodybuilding, he realized the show was rigged and they could never broadcast it. And finally, perhaps the final nail in the coffin for Arnold is that he had several close friends among the judging panel. Four of the seven judges, in fact, were basically in his pocket from the get-go. So apparently back in those days, they used a different scoring system where the higher the point total, the better, as opposed to today where the opposite is true. I'm not sure how it quite worked, but regardless, Albert Busek was one of the judges and also, coincidentally, happened to be an old friend who helped enable Arnold to compete in his first Mr. Universe competition back in 1966. So Bill Pearl, a legendary bodybuilder in his own right, and a man who was supposed to sit among the judging panel but opted out for the sake of fairness since he had helped Dickerson prepare for it, claimed that Busek was a very good friend of Arnold and still idolized him on the level of a sycophant. Reg Park was another, another judge who naturally would be partial towards Arnold, considering Schwarzenegger grew up idolizing him, and Reg would eventually become something of a mentor, taking him under his wing and even inviting Arnold to stay at his home in South Africa, where he would take him out to dinners, films, and parties. Boyer Co. claimed that Reg was even coaching Arnold during the show, giving him instructions from the judges' table. Brendan Ryan and Mitz Kawashima were the other two judges believed to be firmly in Arnold's camp, but for the sake of time, I'll leave it to you guys to read up on them if you're interested. It's all in the article provided in the description. So basically, it could be said that Arnold already had this contest in the bag before anybody ever stepped foot on stage. 
And I think the element of this judging scandal is the biggest reason why the 1980 Mr. Olympia contest proved so highly controversial. That said, believe it or not, I personally don't have a huge problem with it. While it's true that he probably shouldn't have won, I still think Arnold looked very good, and even though he came in a little off, his combination of shapely muscle mass and immaculate stage presence were simply unmatched. Maybe this is a case where you just had to be there in person because based on all the photos and video I've seen, I'm not really convinced that Menser or Zane or Dickerson were that much more deserving when you look at the big picture and all the elements that go into being a champion bodybuilder, not just conditioning. Call me ignorant, but that's just my honest opinion on this thing. So that's all for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and maybe learned a thing or two. I know I definitely did when doing my research for it, but what's your opinions on this one? Who do you think deserve to win? Let us know in the comments below and feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more in-depth bodybuilding videos like this. But until next time, I'm the Tominator signing off and I'll be back.